Welcome. I'm Hope Savara, and I'm here to talk about plank a little bit today. Plank is a pose that everybody loves to teach, but what I've discovered is few people actually um, feel confident that they absolutely know what they're doing in plank. Often you hear cues like wrists under shoulders, um, navel the spine, breathe, things like that. But what I've noticed is I see a wide variety of planks and some are very interesting. We see saggy plank, we see head broken or neck broken plank, we see kind of a, an overly rounded plank or a booty touching plank. Um, and so there's lots of different ways people interpret plank. And if we think about plank, plank is basically a horizontal version of Tadasana. And so Harvard University did a study in 2012 that um, actually confirmed something I've known for a long time, that planks are the new sit-ups. Plank is a great way to have gravity hit you from a different direction than laying flat on your back. You're able to access the whole round torso. Um, that transverse abdominal is really turned on in a pose like plank. But what can happen is we can overuse our more large skeletal muscles to make us feel like we're effective in plank. These muscles include the pecs, the quads, and the glutes. So if you notice that these muscle groups surround the core, but they are not the core. It's important that we work from the deepest level and then work our way out to the most superficial muscle. And there's a couple of key tips that I want to share with you that I think that your plank will be just a little bit more successful. The first is, is what version are you going to be working with? Are you going to be working with a plank position on your palms? Or are you going to be working on your forearms? Both planks have their positives, and sometimes it's a matter of um, a discomfort that you need to either one, work through, or two, you're going to choose a different variation because of that. A lot of people complain of wrist issues in plank. Sometimes you're actually, your alignment's a little off, but other times we need to remember, we're not putting nearly as much weight bearing on our wrist as we have in the past. And so that need to strengthen the wrist channel is super important. And sometimes there's discomfort before we actually find the ease. So you need to address now, is this pain or is this discomfort? I want you to work through the discomfort, but honor the pain. Okay, so let's first go over hand alignment. If we're gonna be in plank, our wrists are gonna be under the shoulders, yes, and our arms are about shoulders distance, but the folds of the elbows are really important. If the folds of my elbows turn in, which happens a lot for people, and you push away from the floor, you're gonna feel a big turn on in your pectoral area, and also a lot more work in your deltoid, so more front cap deltoid. If I turn from my shoulder, not from my wrist, I'm gonna turn from my shoulder joint, and turn the fold of the elbow forward, that's gonna allow us to shift the load down into the core, the back body is gonna broaden, and the chest is gonna open a little bit more parallel with the floor. Now, if you're someone that your elbow's bent in the opposite direction, people call it hyperextension, I call it hypermobile, um, you'll notice that you wanna have a little bit of a bend in the elbow. Now, for those people, your elbows are gonna feel super bent, which in fact, they're actually more closer to neutral than what you're normally used to. Basically, those ligaments and tendons have been overstretched. Maybe it's your bone setup that allows your elbow to bend in the opposite direction. I don't know, I've never met you, but that's just some of the things that commonly happens. So what you're doing is by bending slightly in the elbow, you're trying to regroup, basically trying to shorten the bicep muscle to uh, help compensate for that elbow being hypermobile. So you might notice more contraction work in this area of the arm. You're doing nothing wrong and everything right, so hang in there. Same thing with the hands now. When I change my arm rotation, I feel my palms kind of cup up off the floor and more weight on the outside edge of the hand. I want you to try to press more through the pointer finger and the thumb and through all the knuckles of the hands. So this, in fact, will require you to shift your body weight just a little bit more forward in plank, and that will also take some of the load off of the heel of the hand, which will more evenly disperse the weight on your hand. If I turn sideways and I come into that position, so here I'm going to really excessively round, and now here I'm going to rotate my elbows forward, and I'm just going to slide my shoulders down my back and shift my body weight slightly forward. So now my upper body is set up. 
When we think about the lower body, there's lots of different foot positions. I often like to bring people into the most stable variation. Then we can do all sorts of fun things like uneven arms, wide legs, crossed feet, all sorts of fun stuff. But if people don't understand the basic blueprint of plank, all these other plankings are not going to make sense for the body. We want to think of the pattern of movement, stability before mobility. So before I start having people dance and plank, I'm going to have them try to create some stability so that when they understand and the movement comes in, they feel more confident at what they're doing and where the movement should be executed from, from the core. So once we set up our upper body, I'm going to actually highly suggest taking a foam block or a small mini ball or a rolled towel and slide that guy between the thighs. That when you just squeeze on that block, you are stimulating the pelvic floor. You are also stimulating that lower transversus area. So by just engaging on the block, you're allowing more of that inner core tissue to start to actually turn on and say, oh, I belong in this pose. I belong to be worked versus skipping that whole area going from shoulders to legs. And even if you feel successful in that, it's always a great reminder. I like to say that the inner thighs are the pelvic floor's best friend. All right, so curl the toes under and you're in plank. If your foot setup is too close, you're going to have hyped hips. If your foot setup is too far back, we often have this kind of weird position of the wrist being way forward of the shoulders, which for a lot of people, they end up jamming the arm into the shoulder socket. So I want you to feel like you have this nice stable load. The feet will only be as close as you can engage on the block or your ball. You can either be on the balls of the feet or you can be up on the tips of the big toe. Obviously the tips of the big toe are much more challenging. The knees also are a great alternative. When you're aligning the knees for a modified plank, the knee is behind the hip line. Here you're in table, which you got to start somewhere. Your table might be your starting point. But if you're in modified, the knees are actually behind the hip line. Watch for saggy bellies. You're not using anything in that core reason. I want you to really contract away from the floor. You're resisting gravity. If you're in full plank, think about the body in thirds, okay? So it's one third upper body, one third core, and one third legs. If my pelvis is a neutral, remember, mount the pose horizontally, my pubis bone and hip bones are parallel with the floor. My sit bone, or my tailbone, sorry, and my PSIS, the posterior part of my pelvis, is parallel with the ceiling. So watch that you're not tilting too much in the hip sockets or the hip bones. I want you to keep the belly, the lower frame especially, up resisting gravity. So with the fingertips wide, I'm going to step back with my feet, pressing away from the floor, forward rotation with the arms, engage on your block, work through your inner thighs, quads up towards the sky without booty touching, so without pushing your backside up. I'm going to just right under my navel. I'm just going to tip my hip bones up just a little bit more. You get this core quiver called the earthquake. Now imagine as though your transverse abdominal, that deep hoop-like abdominal muscle, is resisting gravity, okay? Gravity can be for someone, if a partner you're working with, two fingers pressing down on each side of the spine at your lower back. You resist that pressure. You should feel that quake. That's your transverse abdominal turning on. So let's come into plank here. Shoulders slide back, neck is long, no saggy head, which actually brings more pressure on the wrist. Let's just take five breaths. So inhale, and exhale. Inhale, you're feeling the belly deflate, but I want you to try to breathe more into the upper back. Two more breaths. Last breath. Knees come down, sit back, take a breath, and roll yourself up. Awesome. So I'm going to remove the block. If you're going to work on the forearms, which is a plank all in itself, but definitely when I have students that maybe just recently had a carpal tunnel surgery or are coming back from a wrist injury, the forearm plank works really well, but I often caution them to not get stuck on only using the forearm plank because then the wrist ends up being weak, and I really want you to build up that strength and that bone density again. And plank is a naturally weight-bearing asana. We're using our own body weight to build up that strength and stability. No external weight needed. If we can't use our own body weight to build strength, we're not ready for external weight, and plank is a great example of that. For forearm plank, often people use the variation 
of clenching fist into hand or interlacing the fingers to create the steeple effect, I want you to get out of this habit. Why? Because when I bring my arms into this position, you can do this right now with me, and I contract, I bulk my pectoral muscles. Okay? I want you to shift the load down into the core again. If I open my arms parallel, and you'll feel this difference, I completely change the load bearing in my body to create more strength and stability in my core, and I use less pec muscle. If you feel like you need that stability of pressure against something, use a block. The block works great. I often use the block, even if you don't need that pressure, but by pressing in on the block, you can feel more reaction in your core, which is the goal. So with the block, um, it doesn't matter if it's a three inch or four inch, but you want it to go the rectangular shape facing you. Place the block down on the floor. And typically we may be used to turning the palms down in forearm plank. I actually want you to turn your palms in or turn your palms up. By changing the arm position in and up, again, we keep the chest open from rounding and we shift more load into the core. Remember our core is all the way around. It's not just the front, it's also the back body. So we often feel where we're the weakest. If I bring my palms to face in on the block, try not to grip the block, just press in on the block. Elbows are underneath the shoulder. Step back with the feet and now lengthen your body. My sternum is lengthening forward without letting my belly and hips sag or pull up towards the ceiling. If you want to block between the thighs, use it. Otherwise, as I engage my inner thighs, my pelvic floor is contracting towards the base of my skull and my belly is resisting against gravity. Now, try not to let all of the weight be on the elbow. Press your entire weight from your elbow to your pinky or your elbow to the top of your hand. Utilize that entire framework. Try not just to ride on the elbow line. Same setup. Think of it in thirds. One third arms I'm pressing down into the floor, broadening my back without hunching. One third legs I'm going to engage my legs. Not so much glute work unless you can feel really successful in the transverses in the pelvic floor. And one third legs engaging and pressing up as I lengthen through my heels. Let's take five breaths. Modification, you're on the knees again. You're still working hard. If you're going palms up, stay here with me. Press down into your hand and let the arms anchor in on the block. Keep breathing. You're doing great. One more breath. Knees come down, sit back, take a breath, and roll yourself up. Great job. So whether you're a teacher or a student, I really want you to take a moment and reevaluate your plank. So why are you doing plank? Because you know it's good for you? Um, do you know and can you actually feel where your plank is coming from? If you're all in the arms and there's just this big void in your lower body, I really want you to step back and look at what you're doing in your plank. Just because you can do 10 chaturangas in a row doesn't mean that you're using your core at all. You may be doing everything during the day all trying to use your upper body. That will have a negative effect not just now but long term in your body as a whole. Thinking about core health and thinking everything is an extension of our core. So when we think about movement, I really want you to stop and pause and remember everything is feeding from this central source. For more information, visit my website at hopesavara.com. I'd love to hear from you. Send me an email at info at hopesavara.com. And I just so much appreciate your time. Uh, feel free to leave a comment or a question on this video. I also have blog regularly for a few different websites, but also you can visit all my website for all of my blog postings as well. Thank you so much and happy planking. From my heart to yours, from my soul to yours, namaste.